It was Zelda's back in the day. We're on Zelda's couch. And we are streaming. Beautiful. Hi, I am Eric Carter, and I am here with Diane Ragsdale. Um, now, Diane, I know that you had a blog, and in the, in the interest of shedding some light into this blog, and in the, the realm of what we're doing with this convening, which is a lot of live streaming and blogging and Twittering, I was wondering if you could talk about your blog, which is named Jumper, right. and what that actually means to you, and a little bit of the context of where you're coming from. Sure. Um, you know, I started Jumper after I uh, moved to the Netherlands about six years, six months ago. Um, and the name came, I mean, I guess, you know, one way of thinking it is that I've sort of jumped the pond at this point, and I'm, and I'm looking back in some ways at, at the American scene. But, uh, but actually, it came from having moved around through the arts in a lot of different roles. You know, as an actor, a um, little bit director, a little bit producer, I ran a music festival, I um, was managing director of a performing arts uh, organization. I worked at, um, had little stints at a couple film festivals and eventually became a funder. And in some ways, I, you know, it was the, the jumping around into those different roles and different disciplines and different types of organizations, big and small, and, and uh, wearing those many hats that I, I was always sort of an outsider looking in. And uh, I think it's that perspective that I'm trying to bring into the blog of, of having seen the art scene from many different points of view and really having, I think, both um, uh, compassion and sympathy for, for the various you know, sort of points of entry there and the types of people and places that are part of this system, uh, but also, I think, in some ways, um, being just enough on the outside of each of them that I can look at it maybe um, and, and ask, you know, why do we do it this way? Does this really work? You know? Great, great. Um, I guess I can go to this then. Uh, on your blog, you describe what Jumper is, and you say, this may take a while, um, Jumper seeks to delve into the values, ideologies, politics, and principles that underpin current practices and purposes in the arts, and to bring forward for consideration alternative, at times perhaps irrational, perspectives. From history we've forgotten or never learned, from other fields and industries, and from having been an outsider looking in for yeah. much of my career. I was wondering if you could talk about moving forward into the future, how technology now comes into play uh, with new theater in America, um, and whether or not that we should be embracing the technology like we are now with this convening, mm -hmm. or is this something that people feel is a hindrance that you find? You know, I think, uh, uh, well, I was at um, an organization called On the Boards mm -hmm. before I came to the Mellon Foundation, and um, the artistic director there, Lane Chaplinsky, uh, somebody who I have the deepest respect for, um, once handed me a book called Liveness and uh, basically said, you know, this is a book that really asks the question, what is liveness? And, 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 and challenged me as the managing director of that organization to, to think differently about it, which he was doing his work. They just started something called OTB TV. Um, they're they're uh, capturing a lot of their performances um, and uh, uh, you can download them, you can stream them. And they're doing it at, at as I understand it, is sort of an experiment to ask, you know, we don't know what will happen. We don't know if people will watch this performance um, on film mm -hmm. and uh, have a deeper connection with the live performance, not want to go to the live performance, want to go to the live performance, enjoy the experience or not, but somebody's got to go out there mm -hmm. and try this, you know. Um, when I was at Mellon, we supported um, the Met Metropolitan Opera broadcasts early on, and, you know, I saw many of those, and was struck by the fact that somebody who's not an opera person, which I would not characterize myself as, would go to the, would watch those films and feel deeply compelled by what I was seeing, in part because it was more theatrical, it was more intimate. Um, I could make a connection with the piece, um, and it actually made the live performance um, more meaningful to me, right? Mm -hmm. So what I think what we can say is that it, it's worth, I think, experimenting with this technology, one. I don't think we should be afraid of it. Um, I'm not a believer that by recording performance uh, we're going to ruin the, the potential and possibility of live performance to work. I think the two can work together. Um, so from that standpoint, I think you know, technology as it's used to record performances or perhaps substituting for live performance I think is, is great. And then on the flip side, you know, you bring up blogging and tweeting and, and Facebook and all
technologies. I think that I think you know the, the arts are inherently social, mm -hmm. and we've never had more tools at our disposal yes. to connect people to people and people to artists. And there's a, a lot of uh, potential there. I think um, to create connections that can uh, that can then lead to deeper participation, deeper meaning. You know and
organization mm -hmm. that I think we have, we adopt sort of a scarcity mentality in general, mm -hmm. right? And so, and, th and that's in part because, you know, there are these, you know, you sort of, in any given community, I get the sense sometimes that, you know, there are these, we know who the key funders are, we know who the wealthiest individuals are, we know that there's this demographic that will be, you know, subscriber donor mm -hmm. types, you know, and, and, it, and everyone, I think, in, to some degree feels as though they're competing to get the attention of, you know, that, those groups of people. And I think that, you know, that mentality um, then begins to translate into other areas of the organization. And I think you see a sort of rivalry um, uh, stance mm -hmm. that I would agree with David, that's not helpful and not necessary. But you know, we are, I think there's more to be accomplished and done um, if we work together to to uh, better allocate resources and 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 more sort of um, humbly sort of say, you know, what, what can my organization do? Uh, you know, on what means can you do it? And and what should what, what part of this can I give to your organization to do? And and you know, and how much do you need to do what what you want to do? And and I think that that. Uh, we have so much talent in the system um, that, that there's no reason not to think that all of these really talented people who want to be here, mm -hmm. making theater, mm -hmm. shouldn't be able to kind of create something great. You know? Yes, yes, absolutely. It was so, so very nice talking with you. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank if I went over time, I'm you, sorry. No, it's fine. You did. It was fine. Okay, Thank thanks. You.